There goes our soccer ball sized piece of wall. It's being crushed, broken to pieces. Smaller and smaller. Now it's getting even smaller, and now it's being ground into powder. It's all mixed together now, just a big pile of powder. Now you can take it. You watch as the chemicals separate the gold from all the powder and other contaminants. The powder is always being placed in a tank containing a weak solution of cyanide. The cyanide solution is chemically dissolving the exposed gold particles. Next, you see them add zinc to the tank, causing another chemical reaction. The zinc is taking the gold's place in the cyanide solution. It's setting the gold free. Now you see the filter press filtering the gold. But the gold still looks like black mud. And then you watch as it pours in the furnace. What you can smell. You feel it in 1062 degrees Celsius. It's hot. 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 The gold is melting. The fluxes take away more impurities. You see the slag being removed, and then we pour raw bullion. That's beautiful stuff. But don't touch it. It's still hot. This crude bullion is now sent to the Rand refinery in Germiston for processing. Into bars of a minimum of 99.5% gold content. And 0.5% silver. Which is accepted by the gold dealers throughout the world. Some gold is even refined up to 99.99% content. After heating and further sampling, the refined gold is then cast into bars weighing about 12.5 kilograms, a process popularly known as the gold pour. Finally, the exact purity of each gold bar is stamped onto it. Virtually all of the gold produced is sold to the South African Reserve Bank and then sold again to the international gold markets, the main one being in Zurich. Gold is also used for many, many beautiful items of jewelry and coinage. But gold has many day 